again. I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Today we're going to be working on an American Flyer, a PA-1 S-Gage. This came out in a set from 1960, creatively named it the Chief. Yeah, it's a four car set. It's got this PA-1 locomotive, three streamlined passenger cars. This set still gathers quite a bit of money today. I was digging around on the old eBay, come to find out that the set just recently sold for $340 plus shipping. Four American Flyer, four cars. Holy moly. You can buy a reproduction box for it. There's a guy out there that's got those for some strange reason. That box is going to cost you $105 by the time it lands on your doorstep. God. But if you do happen to have everything original from the original 1960 set, including the original box, look what this guy may have gotten maybe sort of close to this or something we don't know because you know i won't tell you when they accept a, accept your offer but man i didn't i didn't think that that american flyer had this kind of show yep everybody out there they want their childhood back they're willing to pay for it mm -hmm. it's been a little while since i've got a train video out i apologize i spent like a week and a half working on this rv that i picked up that I tried to make so we could go camping this Labor Day weekend. Nope, I sat around and made a video because I didn't get the radiator I needed. Ah, has to come up from Texas somewhere and they just couldn't get it here on time. But yeah, if you guys want to see this, this RV restoration taking place, check out my other YouTube channel, Ron's Classic RVs. Got some RV content there. I'm not going to talk about it anymore because this is a train channel, dang it. Let's get on with the train stuff. You know what I'm looking for? 33 percenters. That's how many people are left over from watching my videos till the end. 33%, 100% start, 33% make it to the end. Are you guys gonna be a 33 percenter today? I hope so. We're probably pushing about 35, 40 minutes with this video. Pause it, go down, get an adult beverage, get comfortable. Hang out with me and let's watch this restoration on this classic American Flyer set. Let's get started. Let's take a look at this 1960 Alco PA-1. This whole set, it doesn't look too bad, I don't think. But I mean, you know, for the age that it is, it, it, sure. A little dirty. Got some, oh, we're missing some of the decal right here. That's too bad. Another thing I noticed, it doesn't doesn't have a front coupler on it. So we're going to have to try to figure out what's going on with that. Dang it. Then we got all these other cars. Here's the Columbus. This one must be the combo car. Packages. Cargo. People. A little one right there. She's kind of shy. She's happy. God, it's got a number up here. 24843. And then it's got numbers down here which aren't even the same. Oh, that's confusing. This guy, oh look, back in the old days when you could smoke a pipe. <laughs> Ugh, filth. How about the old Vista Domer? The Hamilton car. Oh, lighted. This one, really nice shape. Little scub up on the top here. Hopefully that'll come around. And this one here. Looks like the they don't keep using the same silhouettes over and over again. That's nice. They kind of designed them all to be a little bit a little bit different sure oh mercy what are we gonna do with that what's this wire up here this one's got a wire on it is that for the wireless communications sending out telegram beep 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 beep, beep. Nah, i don't who knows we're gonna try to clean this whole setup though and make it look really nice huh 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 yeah i want to put it on the track i want to see what it does the old Lionel transformer hooked up here. I usually don't run them beforehand, but I, I'm just curious to see what it what it does. Well, that's not it's not bad. Uh oh, what do we got? Uh oh, holy! Oh, Jesus! It doesn't seem to be reversing. It doesn't seem to be doing a lot of things. No, dang it. No reverses. I noticed this truck, this rear truck, it moves when it gets the juices put to it. 
Watch, watch this. It, uh, it, uh, yeah, right there. See that? Ew. What's going on with that? Let's get that body off there and see what we got to do. Up underneath here, under these trucks, why, way, way, way down inside, down there, there's a screw. And up under the front here, there's a screw down into there. And there's a screw way down into there. Three screws we got to get popped out. And that one's stripped. Yeah. What's this getting me? Has it got me anything? Two screws out of the front. Little guy's like that. How about this rear one? What's he doing? Why won't he come out? Oh, it's... The plastic is stripped off. Oh, yeah, the holes aren't, aren't much good. Hmm. It's tight. Tight here in the center. Oh, oh, hey. Well, that body will be nice and easy to clean up. Oh, looky there. I bet you that's what's giving us our problems. This is hanging up just a little bit. Oh, and we're missing a traction tire. Traction, why do, why do they make traction tires? Uh, I mean, I know why, but okay. Oh, sure. 63, I, I, yeah, I've had stuff fall or wrinkle off on me too. So what do we gotta do? I gotta get some, some glasses, some peeper glasses on here. Okay, pull those two screws out. That's gonna get that out. We're not gonna be able to, there's a lot of soldering or desoldering going on here. If we really wanted to take this apart. Front trucks, looks like we can get in there and oil those. Down here, not much going on. Must be. We got some power coming in right here, and then the other powers are coming in other places. I believe I've got a schematic. Nope, I don't have a schematic, but it looks like I've got an illustrated parts breakdown. I'll throw it on the screen. This is kind of what it looks like. It says it's 365 Santa Fe with a whistle, but the parts look very similar to this one right here. So we're gonna we're gonna run with that. There's a C-clip on this front over here. I'm gonna get this out. So I'm not worried about the body getting buggered up anymore. This underneath here, right here, it's, it's right here. I call them Jesus clips because you work on them and then they spring. And then you're like, ah, oh, Jesus. Here, where is he at? Here's, there he, there he is. What is all this? Stu stuff is just absolutely falling out. So that looks like an insulator. This was underneath, and then I believe it went in like, what is this guy doing? Well, he was stuck right there, so it was like this. That, that. Hate it when stuff just falls apart on me when I'm not looking. The spacer, it's an insulator, keeps it from shorting out. And then it goes on like this, and then it's compressed, and then the Jesus clip goes in there. Yep, that's how it goes. Jesus clip. Washer, spacer, washer, copper thingy right here, and then that's it. And here's... Let's take these two screws out and see what's under there. That one was loose. Oh, that takes off our truck side covers. In the dust, pouring out of there. Oh, right there's the tab. Yeah, you can kind of see it right here. That tab for that front coupler is broken off. Probably took a header. Had some sudden deacceleration syndrome that brought that thing down. Get these parts out of my way here. God, if it wasn't for these wires running through there, you could just take this whole thing apart really super, super easy. That does have a Jesus clip right there. We'd have to desolder that wire. But this is gonna be stuck in there unless we do some desoldering on all this other stuff. Pop out these two screws for this reversing solenoid. Need a bigger screwdriver. Gotta get a man-sized one here. Work on these big ass gauges. Oh. Uh-huh. Yes. This one? Boy, it acts like there's not threads on it. One. This other one just really didn't didn't even really want to come out. It's stripped, I'm sure. Yeah. That's too bad. God, I'm just not in the mood to desolder all that. Am I? No. I'm just gonna desolder this, desolder this one right here. And then we'll clean it up and drag that stuff back and forth through there. I just wanna get this truck dropped out. It's really what I wanna do. I need to get my soldering iron plugged in. See, oh, see, look at this. There's where all that 
slackage was taking place at. So let me get the soldering iron going here. Come on, little buddy. Hoping we'll be able to get that little, get this out of the way. We can get this other Jesus clip out, a C clip. Get this other C clip out. Uh-huh. The washer, this is an insulated whiz bangy right there. Pull this out, we can work with this gapage right there. Here's, this is just like the front, but these are all insulated. Let's take these out and see what we can see. Track pickup sitting right here. Spring it up and down, just riveted to the side. Nice, a little coupler, and it's got this spring back in behind it. Oh, sure, that could cause some problems. That's loose. Wonder how long it's been loose. Can I tighten it up and will it make this respond better? I don't, it's not feeling like it. No. Oh, so it's just got a design flaw. Oh, mercy. Could take that off though. These two screws here. This has a name, but I don't know what it's called. Remember when you're working on this, that your brushes go towards the front of the locomotive because the guy could really get this switched around, it looks like. Is that, too? oh sure. That makes our motor get a little loosey-goosey there. The brackets and all this is doing some rattling. I'm willing to bet we take these six screws out. Here, here, we're gonna be able to get down into that worm drive. This brush holder is gonna come out of the way. Two small ones there on the brush holders. It comes out like this, an, as an assembly. What's making these things spring here? Oh, okay. Oh, this looks like something that's gonna go launching into the outer space sphere sooner or later. Those springs, you can see one end of it's hooked here and then it's laying flat and it comes up and pushes out on this brush. Oh God, yeah. That's gonna be a while to put together. Blah. Well, what's that? That is a little copper filler that goes underneath the brush assembly. Oh, it's the bearing. It's the bearing holder. Holds that for this bushing right here. Bushing. Bearings are different than bushings, but I use them all the same. I shouldn't do that. Bushings. This guy out. Oh, there's, oh, there's hair in here. Look at that dried up bugger. Do this again on the back side. Two, three that are loose. These here holding the bushing retainer down right there. This guy, this plate. Now I'm willing to bet this is going to come out. Yup. Oh, look at the, look at the filth on that. This armature right here. And I'll bet you anything if I put that in backwards, I wonder what'll happen. Oh, I can't. Commutator goes towards the front with the brush holders. I'm telling myself that so I can, future self can remember. This part here, it's pretty much locked down. I don't really feel the need to pull these wires out to get this out of there. Do I? Looks like I can put a little gap in it right here. Oh, sure. I can get that off for cleaning. And if I forgot anything, I can come back and I can look at my video footage. What I'm gonna do now is take some of this here odorless mineral spirits and some Q-tips. And we're going to clean this out. I'm not gonna do it on camera because it's gonna take an hour or more, more than likely to do it. Set this down someplace without the lid on it so you can kick it over and stain your carpet. Get in trouble by the little lady. I don't know why some, some guy just commented that this is not, you don't, you don't use Q-tips. I'm like, you know, there's so many cleaning tips out there that a guy can do. Do what works for you. But there's certainly no reason to, to comment that I'm doing it wrong. It's, it's, you know, if it works, is it really that bad of an idea? These are not gonna come out. The wheels are pressed in. I'm sure there was a jig, because this is one piece right here. So there's a jig that holds the, the gear in and then they pr press the axle into the gear and they press the wheels on and there's a jig that does that. And so this is as far apart as we can get this here assembly. Wish me luck. I'm thinking this many, I'm thinking more than this many Q-tips right here to clean this. It is absolutely filthy. Yep. The Alco PA was a family of A1A, A1A diesel locomotives. A, A1A means the, the wheel arrangement that's on them. I, I know, right? They were built to haul passenger trains. They were built in Schenectady, Schenect, God. They were built in Schenectady, New York, in a partnership between the American Locomotive Company, Alco, and General Electric, GE. They were, made be they were made between June 1946 and December 1953.
they were they were a cab unit kind. You know, they're kind of built automotive style, like a, like an F unit. They weren't a hood unit. There was called a cab unit. They made A's and they made powered B's for them, the cabless. Although the B units were a little bit shorter, but aesthetically they, they looked identical. Just, you know, they did a little bit of different to the front of it. Unfortunately, these Alco units weren't very reliable. There are V16 engines in them. After about two or three years, they started to just go down, break down. They were, and it gave Alco a really bad name and it made EMD even more popular because their stuff ran a little longer. Alco's P letter designation indicated that it was higher geared for higher speeds to haul passenger trains. If it was an FA, that means it was a little bit lower geared and made to haul freight, do the work and do the work for, the, for everybody out there. Although a lot of railroad companies used the PA or the FA for either freight or passenger service. They didn't care. They just wanted something that ran down the road. Fans deemed the PA one of the best looking locomotives that were out there at its time. People loved them. It also somehow got an honorary steam locomotive designation because of the thick black smoke that would roll out of it whenever it was trying to get going. It had such bad turbo lag on it that when the engineer was over there notching up the engine to get getting, if that turbo didn't spool up right away and it just belched out black smoke until the thing started to and then you know, it, it cleaned up. Apparently rail fanners of the time absolutely loved catching pictures of these things just pouring out the black smoke. That's why they kind of gave them an honorary steam locomotive designation because they were really filthy. <laughs> yeah. Here's a little flyover of everything that's taking place. All parts, little pieces, parts are cleaned. Quite a bit of book going on. I did a little cheating and I put these guys and this, you know, and this, and this, in the old ultrasonic cleaner, just to whoop them up into shape. Because there was just so much, so much in there. And this guy here, he had two, two of them. So I started off with it being cold, and it doesn't work as well. And so then I, you know, got the water up to 120, simple green, put it in for another 10, just about came out good, and then I just cleaned her up with some of this. This could be caustic to some plastics and paint, and I felt that this didn't have any in it. This was made, you know, 1960. It's all metal and good stuff. So I pretty much felt comfortable with it not taking anything out, and nothing's painted. This is actual aluminum, you know, molded, cast, not painted, so it didn't ruin any of that paint. I was working on these. It was interesting, the pickups, the pickups on them. See, the pickup rides right here, and of course this bolts on. And the wheels, they're insulated across from each other. And then it's making the, the whole thing be a ground. Well, the juice, the juice is flowing. It doesn't have a ground. But it doesn't do very good going wheel to wheel. So that's why it's got so much picking up. Obviously it's gonna be picking up on this rail for this front juice. And as things are turning and rotating and everything's bolted together, it's getting juice from the wheels and it's also gonna be getting juice from this pickup, which is just grounded to everything on here. Very, very over-engineered pick up on it, I believe. Starting to reassemble this little hunk of hunk of burning. Oh, we're gonna throw a little oil down here on the inside of these axles and try to get them into the aluminum casing. Putting it at a downwheel, you know, downhill slope so the old gravity can maybe pull some of that in there for us. Oh, sure, see that now? It doesn't even, doesn't even rattle or make any noise or nothing. It's perfect. It means we did our job. We got one traction tire. And this one here, we're missing it. Take this off. I want to see if my O-ring... Oh, God, look at that cracked... Oh, Jesus. Yep, age. I got me one of these. It's an O-ring kit. There should be a size in here that's going to work. Now, this original O-ring, it's... Sure, it's an O, but you can see here that it's actually a flat O. And those are... I don't have any of those. So I'm going to end up putting a round O on it. 
as long as it's not too big or change, you know, dramatically change. What did that go? Dramatically changes the diameter of the wheel. Uh, mm, mm. This flange, 0.74, 7 through whatever, this thing, every time you do it, it gives you a different number. What's it going to be? Come on. 734. This is, that's, that's not going to, I don't like that one. Can I jam the next smaller one down on it? Hi, hot, get on, What do we want? 73. Oh, man. That ain't gonna work. These o rings aren't gonna be. I keep jamming holes in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A little narrower. What do we want? 7.73. Hmm. Really, really close. These here look like my best bet. Oh, ah. Honest. A little narrow. What if I could put two on it? I guess I should have ordered up something the proper size four months ago when I got this thing. I'm digging it. Stack these things up. I guess I should really get online. They're easy enough to swap out after everything's all said and done. Oh, sure. Did I have that on there upside down? I think I did. Yeah, jeez. All right, then. Let's put this thing together. Yeah. I've got a motor. I've got an electromagnetic stator assembly right here. <laughs> put our motor in here that's all cleaned up. I haven't done that commutator yet. It's cleaned up from oil, but we'll give her a little polish with the old fiberglass pencil here. This is the old three pole, three, you know, little commutator connections right here. Three underneath these bushings, they need, they need some oil and I wish I could grease them one way or another, but I can't. This is the best that we're going to be able to get. Just a little bit less than too much on it. Get it spun around in there. We're going to put this feller back in down through there. I'd like to know what these set screws do. Maybe they keep the thing from wobbling around like it was. Get this wire pulled back tight. Get this guy in. Commutator facing forward. Shouldn't be able to see. This wheel here keeps rolling on me. I don't have this. It's not seating in there like I want it to. Come on, nah. There we go. Yep. Yep. Let's use some of our super lube in there. Want to get these worm gears whooped into shape. Get some on this. And then we're going to rotate it. Are we? We sure want to. Get a little more on it. Yep, pretty happy with that. These little guys that hold our bushings down. Yeah, the old grease cover is what I'm gonna call this. Keeps it from slinging all over and making a mess out of stuff. It's like the engineers, they cared. I like them. I like the way they think. Got this front one over here. And then we also get a fight with putting the brushes on. Cause they're loose and flapping in the wind. Come on, nah. Oh, you bugger. Careful, easy, slow, gentle, yes. One more, yeah, yes. Put our grease slinger in her. Our brushes are sitting in place. Get these springs, yes, put in there. One more over here. Probably got a ton of wires in the way to see what's going on, what's happening over there. Give these a visual inspection. The brushes are riding on the commutator very nicely. Yes. Yes. Well, there wasn't that much in the, involved in this at all. This little pin right here keeps the truck when it's in here from rotating too far. So I'll put that pin forward. Then we can put these bolts in. I think it was these guys. I wonder where those go. Oh, yeah. I remember now. Put the big ones in like this. They hold this one. Tighten the ever loving out of that. Let's do the same over here. Till, golly, got that horrible. I wonder what these set screws do. 
tightens this whole thing up. They do something, I know. You can just tell by looking at it. Our inflative washer right here, our centering bushing. Get this up in there like show. Another insulative washer. Yeah. This is a little metal guy. And the battle with the Jesus clip. This is the make or break time, fellas. Root for me. Oh, well, shoot. That just went right in. That wasn't even, that wasn't nothing. We still got, still got this play right here. What a super poor design. Considering the front, how they got it, you know, a lot less. What do you do? Hey, you want to know something I found out about this? It's got a lockout on it right under here. And this was pushed up. So that was keeping it from dropping down. So you only had one gear with it. Who knew, huh? See, right there. This is the first time I've ever seen one of these things here, fellers. I didn't know what that was. Now we know. That's open and that's locked. We're going to leave it open, though. Some guys get so mad when I do this. I'm going to do it anyway. It moves. It's metal. It moves. It's got to have a little little lubrication on it. Some guys think it don't need, don't put any on there. It's going to get all gummed up. And I, I've yet to my day of all the years of me mechanic and have I yet to see something gum up from using lightweight oil on it. It does. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't gum up. Never seen it. Get this fella in over here. Use our big boy screwdriver on it. So that one tightens up nice. This one just doesn't. It doesn't come out and it doesn't really go in either. Just stripped, stripped out. Mm -hmm. I think we're gonna put a little bit of, little bit of something, something down in here too, because we can reach it. It's right here. It's pretty handy to put the trucks on. Simple. Oh, you even got a little oil hole right there, which I'm guessing is gonna go in and oil up that motor armature, those, those bushings. Sure ain't doing the gears. You'd have to pull these screws out and oil them gears up once a year or so. Depends on how much you play with it, I guess. This thing was in the drink for quite some time, the old ultrasonic cleaner. So I'm gonna give it a little love down over here on this pin and a little bit right in this coupler area here, just to help it out some. Front truck, we're gonna put it together the same way. This guy's the brass. This little lever is gonna face backwards. The insulator, come on. Then we gotta put this guy in. Oh my, this had, these came Single motored or dual motored. So I guess this frame, they just pop in this, they spot weld this guy in, and then there you got your dual motored one. Oh, Jesus. In here, in the dark, I'll put a little extra light on the show here. Oh, I figured I'd fling that around somewhere. A lot more rigid there, yes. This light bulb, it goes in over here like this. When it's in the body, this is actually underneath. And then this wire, it's, it should have went through that hole. I'm sure that's what that hole's for right there. And somebody blew it. So I'm gonna fix somebody's Friday afternoon job and put that wire through this little hole where it belongs. Now we don't have to worry about it getting pinched. It's almost like somebody cares. Uh, I should have put a grommet in it, yeah. Well, we're gonna take our chances. One pickup over there. One pick up on this side. You can really only put them on one way. You can't, they don't, they don't fit backwards. This one, this one can, sorta. The back one here certainly don't because of this big boss right there. Normally, ordinarily there'd be a coupler hanging off the front of this and this wouldn't be an issue. Now I know why I got this for so cheap. They knew it and I didn't. Lockout is in the unlocked position. I'll bet you that we're gonna have forward and reverse on it now. I just, I just think that we're gonna. Let's go take a look at it. Oh yeah, so much better. No neutral, that's fine. Wish I had a circle of track to run this on. I can, I can break her, wear her in for 10 or 15. This is all I get though. I don't have a voltmeter to chest creep speed. There's its slowest creep speed. 
What am I ruining it on? Just, yeah, okay. Sure. That body came out quite a bit nicer. I just gave it a little washing with, with the toothpaste and some, and some bar hand soap. Really brought it around. This is what she kind of looked like before. And now, ooh. But it needs one more. One more. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna give her a wax and I think it's gonna, oh, see? Yeah, it's gonna make this thing pop. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Wax on, and then soon we will wax off. Toughest part is waiting for the wax to dry. So you got things to do. So we will do this, get the, put, get the wax all the way on it, give it about 10, 15 to dry, wipe it off. Let's see if we can see the big difference. So I know it's gonna be like night and day. Yep, for sure. For sure. Soft microfiber cloth. What are we going to get? Uh huh? Oh, yes, please. Yeah, yeah. Let's show a few minutes later. Er, mer, gird. Yes, please. That came out. Mm hmm. Waxing it. Just like you wax your car. You can wax your model trains. Look at this, sh just the sh sheen on it. Yes, yes. I gotta do that to, I gotta do that to all the passenger cars now. Oh, moly. We should throw this up on the chassis. Huh. I think before we do that, the screw holes, two up here and one back here, they're just a little bit wore out. There's the, the threads are gone. What I'm gonna do, we don't wanna fill them up, because, you know, then you got to re-drill them and stuff like that. Put a little bit of glue around here. See, I just, on the end, a little some, hum, some, some. We're going to wipe it around the inside. That's it. We're not going to put the screws in yet. Just going to give it a little bit of meat. A little bit of something, something to grab onto. Maybe. Hopefully. That's the, that's the goal. So we just want to close them up some. We're gonna give that 10, 15 to set up. Then we'll put the screws in it. We allowed ample time for that stuff to dry. The glue to set up, so let's let's install our chess chesses. This feller in like this, making sure not to pinch the wires. A little tight in the center. Yeah, come on. You can get it. Uh-huh. A little more. What do you give me something? Just something. There it is. Yes, I can see my back, the back holes lined up. Then we're gonna put the headlight in with our modified, oh sure. They make screwdrivers that are split up here. And you push a collar up and down or you do things and the, and the, the flathead part will spread open. It'll, it'll, it'll hold. And, I, and these things are down in there so deep, I, I don't have, so I take a little bit of this butyl tape right here. Plumbing, plumber's putty. It also kind of, sort of is. I should go out and find me one of them. I need to know what those screwdrivers are called first before I can even order one. But see, I got this going on. So it's like, well, why do I even need to order anything? Because I've got this all whooped into shape. Reach down in there and I can, oh yeah, we've got, there's some meat, there's something there now. That screw is screwing in. Nice. It wasn't, won't rattle out on the track. Uh-huh, oh, this is so, yep. And we got the headlight assembly going in, staying nice and tight there, yeah. Get this back one buried. Oh, it's just buried in the, the deepest, darkest. You know, I was talking up these engineers earlier. Now, I'm not too sure. Does that got mean? Oh, it sure does, yes. There we go, is this thing locked? Yep, oh, it's gonna, hey, look at that. We should take her to the track. Now we should take her to the track and see how nice it looks. Before I throw that up there, look at look at these guys. They're just a little, well, oh, oh, yeah, not a little dirty. Oh, see, yeah. Oh, we've got to take these all apart and clean them. I'm just trying to show you that they're all, they're all lighted. They're all doing what they're supposed to. Oh, I love it. My childhood is just pouring back in right now. Goodness gracious. Look at that headlight. It's even working, yes. Now I gotta spend a bunch of time waxing up all the cars to make them look all shiny and absolutely gorgeous, just like this one. Oh. 
So we need to get into these and service them up, clean them up, wash them up a little bit, see what we can do to make them better than this. This is pretty filthy. As eyeballing underneath here, this doesn't have screws holding it in. It's actually got these little pins right here that's holding the metal chassis into the plastic body. And this is the dumbest thing I've ever seen. I wanna put some little protection down. I should have done that earlier. You wanna scratch them up. To get these pins out, I'm gonna use a pair of side cutters. Cause you gotta, it's like pulling track nails. You gotta get underneath of it, lift it up a little bit, very carefully. They do appear to be metal. Here's one that I've already pulled out right here and it's got splines down this, down this length. So you gotta get underneath of it and lift it up just some so you can get a hold of that head, get the side cutters underneath of it. I, I honestly can't believe that they did this. This is pretty, uh, I'm mad at them engineers again, I'll tell you that. And they're definitely made not to take apart. Pry it up, get underneath of it, pull it out. They might be, they might be aluminum, they seem kind of soft. But there's three, four, there's eight per car. I'm gonna work on getting these out. So we can see what the inside of the body is going to look like for these windows and things like that. Turns out there's six of these little buggers right here. And then there's two that are just like alignment pins centering up in there. Because I got this one here, I was fighting these, fighting these. And then I just finally just lifted the thing up and out it came and it's like, oh. So you can see these here are the plastic part of the body and then the metal ones the little rivets to pull out. So there's only six pins to take out. This is what we got on the inside of it. Somehow I got an extra, I got an extra translucent paper for some reason. I could see if it was right by the light bulb, but it wasn't. Here's our light bulb and our chassis right here. Pretty straightforward. Picking up its juices from these two wheels and these two wheels. Just going through the trucks. This one's isolated from the chassis. Looks like it's got a GE 432 light bulb in it. Take out our paper. How are those windows put in? They are glued. So they can still they can still be washed under so warm soapy water. I don't want to risk removing them. Just the tough part is, is that the moisture will be in behind them. So it's going to take longer to dry it to the sink. Well, one washing, <clears throat> yeah, a little bit, but we're going to go ahead and wax them too. Same step as doing your car. Put a light coating on and give her a little protective. This is when you stack them up in, in a box and the trucks do that to things. That's unfortunate, you know, but they're old toys. Got one of these chassis tuned up, but I found that all of the cars had that extra piece of paper in it and they were all at one end. So I'm gonna see if it's supposed to be in the center so that it, you know, diffuses the light better. Two pieces of paper here, and it would be sitting like that. But that extra one, see how uh, you can see it in there. Seems silly. Here's what the second piece removed. Oh, see, uh, yeah, gotta put those in. That doesn't work so much. Here we are back to the extra piece in there. Yeah, that makes it look better, I guess. The rest of it doesn't start on fire. So I found these and they, you know, they were all down at one end. So I'm going to make sure it stays in the center this time. Yes. So I took the old Dremel here and I found the metal wheels and I gave them just a little zing zing at a slow speed. So you don't forget fellers, these, these have multiple speeds to them. They don't need to be wide open. Just get in there and tune her up a little bit. Get all the scub off the wheels. And then of course come in with your light oil and give them a little taste down here by the until they don't until they roll good you know you shouldn't hear anything these spin quiet this one i haven't done anything to yet see dries a bone dries a bone after hand waxing these washing them and then hand waxing them yeah they've got a sheen to them but uh, you know he wasn't able to get some of the marks out dang it dang it but yeah they're they're a lot more shinier than they were definitely worth it 
Put our paper in there. I believe all these chassis are like just completely identical. Alignment marks. And these little pins that we took out, put them back in the holes, push them all the way in. Screws, I guess I would have liked that better, but it hasn't been taken apart since 1960. So is it really an issue? No, no, I don't really think that it is. Seems like a guy might have to have something to tap those in with. It didn't just push in. I might have to get like a nail set out and a small brass hammer and give them a little, some love tappings. So yep, yeah, I'll keep on doing that. Get all these cars put together. We can run the whole thing as an assembly finally. It's a completed unit. Yeah. Well, this is what the old girl looks like now. All cleaned up and shined up. Sitting on the tracks. Yep. Oh, sure. We should twist the wick on it. Sure. Can't really get any better shots of it because my test track is just too dang short. She, uh, creep speed. Yeah, it's up a little more scalish. Only got 11 feet to run it. Oh, yeah. that took like two days to get all that thing done. One question I got though, you think I should have some merch? Is anybody interested in merch? You know, got coffee cups, bumper stickers, I have t-shirts, things. Let, let me know down in the comments if you think merch should be kind of a cool idea. And also then I need a graphic artist fella out there that uh, can draw some stuff, you know. Uh, reach out to me on my Facebook fan page, Classic Model Trains. If you're a graphic artist, if you got some ideas on what your rates might be. So, had an absolute fun this weekend. It's now cold and rainy outside, like a typical Labor Day weekend should end. So, I'm Ron with Classic Model Trains. Thanks so much for the 33% that are still here with me. Bye bye.